In this video, I want to have a look at probability problems involving permutations and combinations. So before we start looking at the actual problems, we just need to remember this formula for finding probabilities. So this means that the probability of an event is going to be equal to the number of favourable outcomes divided by the total number of outcomes in the sample space. So let's jump straight into some examples. Our first problem says Dave and Mel are amongst six people who are going to dinner and they're going to be seated at a round table. What is the probability that they are seated next to each other? So in this one, the probability that they're seated next to each other is going to be equal to. Now, I often like to do the total number of outcomes in the sample space first and then figure out the favourable outcomes. So if you remember when we started looking at permutations and combinations, if we're seating people in a circle or arranging them in a circle, it's going to be one less factorial than if we were arranging them in a straight line. So if we were arranging six people in a straight line, there are six factorial different ways we could do that. But because we're arranging them in a circle, it's only going to be five factorial. Now, if we've got six people, including Mel and Dave, because we're arranging them, we want to see how many ways they can be together. We're going to consider Mel and Dave as one item in that, um, in that group now. So we're going to have a look and imagine that we have five groups of people so five, four individuals and one of those is the pair as well. And that's going to give us four factorial ways that they can be arranged in a circle. But then for all of those arrangements, we could switch Mel and Dave around. So we're going to have to times that by two. So then if we figure this out, that's going to give our probability. And that's going to give us two over five as our probability. Our second example says, what is the probability of forming an odd number if three digit numbers are made from the digits 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 8, 9, and none of the digits are repeated. So we're looking at the probability of an odd number. Again, I'm going to start with how many possible numbers, possible three digit numbers we could make. So in here we have seven digits to choose from. Because the order matters, if we switch them around, we're going to end up with a different number. That means we're looking at a permutation. And we're going to go seven and we're going to pick three numbers to make our three digit number. So this is how many possible three-digit numbers we can make. But we only want to consider the three-digit odd numbers. So if we have a look at that last digit of that number, it has to be odd. So we could either have the one, the three, the five, or the nine. So that's four different options for our last number. And then we're going to multiply that, and we want to see how many options we have for the other two digits in that number. So because we've used one of the digits here, we only have six options left, and we're going to pick two of them now. So this is going to be our formula for figuring that out, and if you pop all of that in your calculator, you're going to end up with 4 over 7 as our probability. Our third example says, assuming that each letter has an equal chance of occurring, what is the probability that in choosing four letters from the word teamwork, three of the letters will be constant? So we're going to look at the probability of getting three constants. So again, I'm going to have a look at how many different ways we could choose four letters from that word. So in that word, we've got eight letters in total, and we're going to choose four of them. So that's how many possible different combinations we could have of letters. But we only want to consider the combinations that end up with three consonants. So that could happen if we do... If we look at the consonants first, we've got a T, an M, a W, an R, and a K. So that's five of them. So we've got five, and we're going to choose three of them. But if three of them are consonants, that also means that the other two, sorry, the other one letter has to be a vowel. So we're going to have to multiply that by the number of possible ways we could choose a vowel to go in there with those. So that's going to be four, because there's four vowels in there. Is there or is there three? One, two, there's only three. So we're going to have three vowels and we're going to choose one of them. So we've got, we're choosing our three consonants and our one vowel out of the total possible combinations, and that's going to simplify it to three over seven. Our last example says a random sample of five people is to be chosen from a group containing six males and three females. What is the probability that the sample contains exactly three males for part A? So for part A, we're going to find the probability of exactly three males. So if we're having a look first at the total number of ways we could choose a group of five people from this group, we've got in total nine people. So we're going to have nine and we're going to choose five of them. But if we're only looking at the groups that contain exactly three males, 
we're going to have six males in total and we're going to choose three of them. So that's going to give us the number of possible ways we can do that. But we want our group to be made up of five people. So that means there's also going to have to be two females in there. So we've got three females to choose from. So we're going to have three and we're going to choose two of them. So working all of that out in your calculator would give you 10 over 21. Now part B is slightly more complicated. It wants at least three males. So we're going to have the probability of greater than or equal to three males. So the denominator is going to be the same thing. It's still going to be our 9C5. But in the top, we're going to have a couple of different things added together. So we're going to have this one first for exactly three males. So we'd have 6C3 times 3C2. But we could also have four males. So we're going to plus, and we can do 6C4, which would mean we'd have to have one female. So we'll go 3C1. Or we could have the whole group made up of males. So we could have 6C5 and times that by 3C0. Now you don't actually need this bit on the end, but it's just nice to see the pattern and understand what you're doing. And if we pop all of that in your calculator, you're going to end up with 37 over 42. So that's having a look at problems, probability problems that involve permutations and combinations.